Hello and welcome to Doing Business in Rwanda. I'm Arnold Segawa. We are in the special economic zone and behind me is the factory that has been set up by Africa Improved Foods. Now this is a strategic partnership with the government of Rwanda in a bid to improve the mortality rate ratios in the country. All that and more coming up on the show. Remember you can be a part of the conversation via Twitter. That's of course at DBI Rwanda. This is Doing Business in Rwanda. Over 230 million people suffer from hunger and malnutrition in sub-Saharan Africa, with Somalia registering the highest. Amid difficulties and setbacks attributed to civil wars, poverty and the underlying prolonged drought, Rwanda, in partnership with Africa Improved Foods, aim to put an end to malnutrition and infant mortality. What we're here to tackle is all forms of malnutrition. So stunting in particular, which is, you know, is a major problem in this part of the world. About 40% of the children under five are, are stunted, um, which is way too many. And, you know, as you know, the main problem with that is, is, is uh, the, the, the non-fulfillment of brain uh, potential, uh, which has a massive impact uh, on, uh, on the economy, amongst other things. The product that we are making is really the gold standard of products of this nature. It is based on uh, the World Food Programme's uh, product that they use to treat moderate acute malnutrition. We, it was developed by DSM, uh, one of our main partners in collaboration with the World Food Programme. Uh, it's produced to the very highest of international standards and as I say it is widely regarded to be the gold standard for infant and maternal nutrition. Rwanda's investor-friendly environment is quite captivating. Investment firms like FMO, IFC, and Royal DSM that made over 12 billion US dollars in sales look at leveraging economic development in sub-Saharan Africa on rather supporting small-scale farmers to improve the quality and quantity of their produce and creating a market for them than importing goods from established countries like the US or the United Kingdom as a quicker approach to lessen and stop the malnourishment in Africa. And we believe that we have a broader responsibility than only doing business, that is important, but also to help the world. And we have been partnering with the United Nations and the World Food Programme for almost 10 years to help them and to enrich food and food help. But at the end of the day, we said we need to manufacture healthy, nutritious food locally. And we choose Rwanda to prove this concept out of staple food growing in Rwanda by smallholders, 9,000 farmers are delivering their maize, their soy to our factory and we make nutritious food for the people in Rwanda. And with this concept, and I hope we can replicate it to other countries, we want to prove that we can address hunger via local manufacturing and not only importing it from the West. We are working on several solutions. There is a strong business case for the government to be involved because if we actually develop uh, the case of malnutrition it will also save a lot of money for the government. Uh, so it's really a win-win for all the players around. There is a strong business case also to develop the market locally to source the product locally, which also, as was mentioned before, helps a lot of smallholders. Uh, so if we source the product locally, 9,000 smallholders get more productivity. I was this morning at a cooperative where we saw that in three years, within three years time, they managed to triple their productivity, their yields. So there's a lot of gains that can be made from this investment. When we first looked at this project, I was struck by the development impact. Very few of our projects uh, directly target such kind of development outcomes. We have trickle-down effects when we support a business, we expect it to create jobs and through that reduce poverty. Uh, in this case, we're addressing a key development challenge directly by supporting this project, malnutrition. And, and we know that uh, from historical efforts that addressing malnutrition is probably the best use of the development dollar. So when we saw this project, uh, we said this is something that we should be looking to support. The Millennium Development Goals were initially set to combat stunting, which is largely a result and strong indicator of hunger and endemic poverty. A report by the World Food Programme 
shows that stunting in five-year-olds dropped to 36.7% in 2015, this coming from 43% in 2012. The government of Rwanda has achieved this and is looking at more effective strategies to make the country a food and nutrition secure country moving forward with support to farmers. We've already been working with around 9,000 smallholder farmers and with the ones that we've worked with we've seen a yield increase of about 20% um, and they really appreciate uh, you know, the fact that we, we, we arrive there at the farm gate on time, we pay a good price and we help them improve their quality as well. Um, in terms of the jobs we create within the factory, we create more than 300 uh, full-time jobs. In addition to 500 we created uh, in building the factory and we think that an additional five or 600 in the value chain with all the different suppliers that we use, with uh, uh, packaging providers, with logistics providers, with other sorts of service providers. So we're creating a lot of jobs. We're 1,122 members of the cooperative and employ of eight people. In terms of production, in 2007, before consolidation and the introduction of single crop per field, the produce was just 600 kilograms per hectare. This season, we had over 1,100 tons. And it was quite different from the years before because we have markets for our products, that is, from AIF. <laughs> they helped us a lot. Africa improved foods, sources all agricultural produce, and where necessary, also gets more from the region. All of the maize, soybeans and more are stored at the facility in the special economic zone. In terms of storage, we have about we have uh, 20,000 metric tons capacity of storage because we have uh, 10 silos whereby one silo carries 2,000 uh, metric tons. Uh, in terms of uh, plant capacity, we are doing 160 metric tons per day, uh, running for six days because we have one day for maintenance. So when we translate that, it's about 960 metric tons per week. Although the direct impact that both the country and the partners are looking at is ending malnutrition and stunting among five-year-olds, economic development comes second. With Rwanda's economic development poverty reduction strategy phase two, where the country plans to create over 200,000 jobs per year through projects like these, and more. In terms of uh, direct employees, we have uh, in total we have uh, 300, but I'll say in the plant we have 185, whereby uh, we have, uh, I'll say, two categories. There are those permanently employed by AIF, and we have uh, subcontracted like the cleaning fa facility. We have that, those ones we have contracted uh, as another contractor who does the cleaning services for us. But uh, I'll say in total we have 185 employees working directly in production. Since 2015, Rwanda has been pushing for public-private partnerships in various sectors, and the country has been able to realize the impact, but none in terms of nutritious food productions. Yet again, Rwanda took the initiative by entering a joint venture with Africa Improved Foods to better the nutritional status of her population and the region. It's the first time we're using public-private partnership to address a key development challenge in the health and nutrition space. And you don't see many examples of this. And, and so we're hoping that this model will be successful in demonstrating that. And second, a world-class plant like this set up in Rwanda will raise manufacturing standards and, and processing standards, develop supply chains. So we expect a significant multiplier effect from this project, not just addressing you know, malnutrition issues, which are, has its own development benefits, but other, uh, other impacts as well. I'm measuring the impact of the malnutrition, that's a concrete project that we are looking at. Also, what is the impact of both the mothers and the children having used in the first 1,000 days the new products uh, and how they actually can improve their health. Products like Nutrimama and Nutritoto are being produced in Rwanda on demand from the World Food Programme, the Rwanda government, and domestic consumption, all on the back of policies to see the country's GDP grow. This would entail having the country move from being a net importer and moving forward with poverty reduction and wealth creation for the nationals and the region. A number of reasons. The first is uh, ease of doing business. It's a private sector friendly climate. 
um, lack of corruption, a government that actually helps facilitate the set of businesses. So, I mean, really, that's, that's the primary reason. Um, but in addition to that, it's a, it's a stable country, fast-growing market, and access to other adjacent markets that are also large and fast-growing. As of now, our products are on the shelf in Uganda. Our products are on their way to being on the shelf in DRC, as well as being having been on the shelf for a couple of months in Rwanda. So it's happening. Um, we need to drive that forward. So we need to build out our sales organizations in those parts of the world and also look at other markets like Tanzania and Kenya as well as Ethiopia uh, to really become a regional player. All the people who are stunted, all the people suffering from hunger, the only solution is that the West, United States, Europe, come with help with their products to Africa, Rwanda, other countries. I think this is not sustainable. At the end of the day, we need to manufacture it here. And therefore, we thought we see it here a business opportunity. We see here also an opportunity for Rwanda to manufacture your own food here locally. And we convinced the government because we think Rwanda went through uh, 23 years ago, difficult phase, and how it developed out of that is remarkable. Now, according to the World Bank, the African population is set to increase by close to 450 million people by 2030. The all important question is, where is the food to feed these people going to come from? That's the answer that the countries like Rwanda are trying to answer by having strategic partnerships with the likes of Africa Improved Foods behind me. That's where we'll leave it for this edition of Doing Business in Rwanda. If you have any feedback, just send me an email or the entire team. That's dbir at abn360.com or just tweet us at DBI Rwanda. I'm Arnold Segoa and from the entire Doing Business in Rwanda team, thanks for watching.